Earlier this year, we did a tour at Terrain's flagship store in Glen Mills, PA. There we got to speak with Terrain's plant buyer, Melissa Lowry, about her work and what she's seeing in plant trends. One part of the interview we weren't able to share at the time, however, was the release of their book because, well, it was just too soon. And so how long have you been working here? So I actually joined the brand when we were first launching in 2008. I was poached from another local garden center um, and part of the original buying team at that point. Um, and was here for a few years, left to open my own design business for a few years, and then came back about six years ago. So I've always been tangentially related throughout the years and would come in and do freelance projects or make wreaths as a vendor for them, but I've been back in role for about six years now. Wow, I didn't realize that you were one of the foundational Original, yeah. 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 How has that changed over the years? So much. Yeah. Um, I mean, the industry has changed so much, so by virtue of that, we've had to evolve, but we were really one of the first people in the game as far as like thinking in a different way about this, at least on this continent. And I think that because of that, we've had to really kind of keep pace and almost outpace some of our competitors in that way. Um, but with foliage, it's always been a big piece of what we do. It's one of our, you know, one of our biggest annual classes as far as like the way that we generate sales over the course of the year. But with the way everything exploded, especially during COVID, it's been like a really incredible ride to watch yeah. this kind of rise to the level that it's at now. Yeah, and yeah. just to backtrack about what you're saying about, um, you know, you were kind of the first on the continent actually to think about this way. Do you mean that more as like from a lifestyle standpoint, or how do you how do you mean for that by that? Yeah, I think it's like taking that classic um, family-owned garden center model that's really plugged into communities in different ways and bringing it to a corporate perspective where you kind of have a bit more worldview and maybe a slightly more elevated approach, but really mixing the hard goods with the green goods and kind of coming up with ways that um, you can infuse natural life into your lifestyle across the board inside and out. So, right. you know, I think from a design perspective, we've always had a slightly larger view because of the company that we work with. And that's just evolved over the years in different ways. Well, I've even noticed from like, I think I was here maybe two years ago. Or right more. before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, right before the pandemic. And I've already seen like a, a little bit more of a shift. You have some of these uh, like large aroids coming in yeah. and everything. How has that shifted like your your sourcing of plants? Like, are you working with the same suppliers? Did you have to go out and seek new suppliers in order to be able to meet some of the demands or the expectations of buyers? We, you know, haven't shifted too much because I've always had really great sourcing partners. Um, I think they got more nimble and more in the game and they were listening to our feedback for what we wanted in a way that's been driving the industry in a really interesting way. You know, we've always traveled a lot, which is another way that we do things differently here. So I go and see my growers in Florida every year, sometimes twice a year, and I go to California twice a year to see our growers. And those pieces really allow us to, A, have boots on the ground and understand what the product is looking like coming from different areas, but also the ability to kind of be in the growers' ears and feed them what we're looking for and kind of like prioritize things for them, I think has really changed the game for us. Got internally. it. Yeah. And then where do you think like your direction is going to be heading, you know, a year or two years from now? Like, what are you seeing and what are you thinking about? Like, hey, I'm staying on top of the competition. Right, yeah. thing. <laughs> you know, because you do have that kind of... That, that corporate level of like competitiveness, yeah, if you will. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, now that there are so, there's so much more interest, there's so many more sh small shops in the game. And I feel like the difference between us and them is that they're a little bit less afraid of like a higher price point thing. Mm -hmm. um, and with us, it's got to be a blend. We've got to be able to hit kind of all the different um, demographics and needs of our customer. But I think over the next few years, to me, it's interesting to see how plant trend is shifting. You know, the Loratas of the world are definitely like going in a different way. And I think that there's some fun, new, exciting floor plants coming in. I think that as people have maybe hit max capacity with their collections, I think that there's some more nuanced things that start to happen with like what you're collecting and why. What am I successful with? What works in my space? What's important to me and what brings me satisfaction seems to kind of be the things that are driving the collectors now. Mm. Um, you know, much deeper dives into Hoya. It's something that I've kind of gotten into. Um, I feel like, you know, <laughs> a big immune, palm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I think palms, you know, for us yeah. have been a big thing. I've been obsessed with La Koala for years, and that's a thing that's kind of uh, started to hit a little bit more for us in the past year or so. Yeah. I hear you also are having a, a houseplant book coming out. We do, yeah. Um, released this fall, um, really from the perspective of a plant buyer, which is kind of like my unique take on this world. So it's called The Houseplant Book. It is um, 
a bit of an anthology, but kind of really focused on the way that I think about plant groupings as I buy. But then also these kind of really lovely interstitials. My, my favorite part of the book is that I was able to feature a lot of the specialty growers that I've come to know over the course of the year and kind of give a little bit of their story and some insight into the way that people grow that I think the average person doesn't ever get to see. So I'm really excited about that part of it. That's great. So you're really bringing a first person perspective to the book but it still feels like something that is, um, people could take away really solid advice from, especially because it's done also through the growers' eyes exactly. as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Fascinating. So, it'll be fun, it's exciting, it's just like, you know, the very last stages of it right now, so. Okay, so fall 2022. Yeah, October, I believe. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I did get a chance to sync back up with Melissa at their store in Connecticut, however, to celebrate the Houseplant Books launch, so I just thought I'd share some clips of that. One thing I will say is that I'm always so impressed by the layout, vibe, and curation of the terrain stores. They're fun places to be and always have a nice selection of plants and garden-related items. I took the train up there, so I couldn't walk away with too much stuff, but I may have gotten a couple plants while I was there. Now, I hosted the Q&A that night, so I didn't film that sadly, but hopefully I got enough footage to give you a sense of the store and that evening. And thanks for following along on Plant One On Me's journey. We've been over five years in the making and we're excited for what's on the horizon in the coming years. Now we've had our hands full because we've also started another channel two years back called Flock, which is the homestead that I'm building together with friends in upstate New York. Now admittedly, I've been offline a bit more because I've had my hands in the dirt so much there, so you may not see me on social as much, but if you're curious about what we're building there, I encourage you to check it out because we're having a ton of fun gardening, experimenting, and renovating. We'll also be building spaces there where I could keep my house plants, and it's a slow process, but we have to trust that we'll get it done eventually and I'll have everything in one place. Anyway, thanks again. If you care to, like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and all that good stuff that keeps us creators ticking. And I'll see you in the next video.